everybody, Onyx Cat Gaming here with another Let's Play of Murder She Wrote. And we are on our final um, book, which is called Final Curtain, with Jessica and her cousin Emma. Yeah. Mr. Winslow, did you ever see your ex-wife carrying the attaché case seen here in this photo? No. Very well. This is a photo of Miss Drury with Mr. Nigel Watersford. Had you ever seen the two of them together? I had no idea she even knew him. You had no clue at all that she might be having an affair with him? No. Well, she had seemed more secretive than usual recently. Maybe this is why. If you don't mind, we'll have a look around for that attaché case. Hmm. <clears throat> so apparently he knew who he was. Maybe? The way he acted? Okay. <coughs> um... I seem to do this, but at the same time, it's like, okay, I want to wait. Fish food. Okay. No wonder I need fish food. Okay. Um, I know I got some glowing stuff here, but I want to try to find as much as I can before. Start doing other things. Walking cane. Now I'm looking for the hat. Light bulb and the coffee mug. Oh, there's light bulb. Mm -hmm. Coffee mug. Hat and then a trophy. Okay. I know I shouldn't be writing, but I can't stop thinking about you. I must see you again. I'm afraid to call because I fear the phone records could give us away, and I wouldn't want anything to do to damage your reputation. Please come to my office at 11 a.m. on Saturday and come and through the back entrance. Until then, Nigel. Mr. Winslow, if this note had has been sitting in your office, how could you not have known about Jane and Nigel's affair? I hadn't seen that before now. While we were married, our mail was always delivered together, and sometimes it still gets mixed up. It must have ended up here purely by accident. Okay. What an acting career James has had. It looks like he got to travel the world quite extensively. These two posters look nearly identical. Let's compare them. Uh, okay, one of these. Like um doing these, you have to find the difference. Uh, 
Um, how many more do I have? Two more. Oh, oh, I guess I got five more. Sorry, I didn't mean to click there, dude. But <coughs> I had to. Whew. Okay, I need one more. One simple little one more. It could be anything between a wing or a flower dress. Oh, I found it. Go ahead, movement. You've got quite a collection of mobilia from your career as Shakespearean actor, Mr. Winslow. Yes, I toured with a troupe back in the 90s. There's no sign of the attaché case. Inspector, I don't believe James was ignorant of Jane's relationship with Mr. Watersford. Why is that? Because the note from Nigel to Jane was found in Jane's office but the envelope it came in was found in Jane's dressing room. If the envelope was in her dressing room, it couldn't have been misdelivered. So James knew that Jane and Nigel had a rendezvous planned on the day of the murder. Perhaps Mr. Bajpai can tell us more. He's out on bail, but I'll have my men track him down. Very suspicious, I would think. <clears throat> we have a few more questions for you, Mr. Bashpai. In the course of following Ms. Drury the day she was killed, you must have followed her to Nigel Waterford's office and seen her leave with an attaché case. Yes, what's your point? Did you also see something that would explain how she got away from Mr. Waterford's office so quickly? Well, after I snapped the picture of Jane carrying the attaché case, I did see her get into a car that was waiting for her at the curb. A taxi? No, definitely a private car. Did you manage to get a picture of it as well? No such luck, but I think I can recall part of the license plate registration. We'll take down what you remember and see if it turns up something in our database. I have backups of the databases here on CD-ROM. Now, where on earth did I put them? <laughs> um. Um. <laughs> old days of <clears throat> computers. I remember back in the 90s when we had to have dial-up. Holy cow. It was dreadful. I mean, nowadays, things are so simple. You can get on Wi-Fi extremely easy. But, but back then, holy smoke. It would take you about... Oh, five minutes just to log in 
people with you? To the internet? Let's see if we can narrow down the license plates determine the car Jane left it. Okay. No repeating letters. Okay, so. No repeating letters. Okay, so that one's out. That one's out. Not too many people. Not too many people have repeating letters. Okay. Second number is the lowest. So that's out. That's out. That is out. That's out. Hmm. That's out. Nope. Nope. This is taking out a lot of them. Only odd numbers, okay. Get rid of the evens. Okay. Let us appear in alphabet alphabetical order. Okay. Out. 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 Okay. One vowel only. That one's out. No repeating numbers. Which took away nothing. Because I don't see those are different, those are different. Uh, yep. Okay. Some of the first two numbers is less than the last. Let's take that one away and that one and that one. Last letter is not a vowel, so okay. That one. <clears throat> So, let's get back to this. But yeah, nowadays, people don't know how easy they have it, kids these days. I know when I was a kid, I didn't have a cell phone. We weren't allowed to have a cell phone. Of course, back in the 90s, we didn't have cell phones, really. It was just not the way it was. I mean, we had a um, computer, but that was, has been, has always been a kind of a tech freak, a tech, tech thing, you know, tech kind of thing. Always looking forward to the um, always wanting the newer stuff. So we had a kid which I was always, always on. So the car Jane left in belongs to James Winslow, her ex husband. <coughs> James must have known about the attache case after all, since it was with Jane when he picked her up.
is no sign of Mr. Winslow. Good. I think we may learn more here without his help. But yeah, I mean, I was... <clears throat> I've always been the stay-at-home kind of person. I've never, I've never been an outdoorsy person. My sister, on the other hand, younger sister, she's... She was always out and about, always wanted to go outside. My polar opposite. <laughs> so, yeah, I was the one. Who, I spent a lot of time on the computer when I could. Back when AOL was famous. And popular. Because that was our... <clears throat> uh, I mean, that's how you talk to people. And from around the world, just going <clears throat> AOL and into the different chat rooms they had. sign of that attaché case. Well, if the merchandise mentioned on that answering machine message is any indication, we won't find it here. Apparently James neither has it nor knows where it is. I disagree. I think James knows very well where it is. The answering machine message merely means he hasn't gone back to retrieve it yet. But we're running out of time to find it before he does. But where could it be? The only logical place is Giles Badge Pie's office. Giles saw Jane with the attaché case, saw her get into a car driven by James with it, and he was in her dressing room later that evening. That must be when he took it. Well, let's go have a look then. <clears throat> There's an awful lot of mail here. Mr. Batchpie hasn't been here for a while. Being arrested tends to make people rethink their lives. The briefcase must be here. I'm certain of it. Where would it be?
Asyik, asyik, asyik. Pears, okay. your pants envelope with the blue and white and red stripes along the edges. what this key belongs to. Okay. <coughs> I thought you had it. And as I thought, the same attache case as in the photo Mr. Bash Pie took of Jane. Where could it be? Looking for this attaché case, Mr. Winslow? I don't understand. How... Because you and Jane were working together to steal top-secret information from Nigel Watersford. I've never tried to do anything of the sort. I'm sorry, James. But the fact that Mr. Badgepie saw you pick Jane up in your car after she stole the case from Nigel makes it difficult to believe that you are innocent in all of this. Purely speculation. You have no evidence. Actually, we do. We have your answering machine with a call on it that can be traced back to your buyer, Yuri. Who is Yuri, James? A Russian spy. I became friendly with him during our tour of the former Soviet Republic, back in my Shakespearean days. He offered to buy anything of value I could obtain. You knew about Jane and Nigel's relationship, didn't you? I did. And I knew that Nigel had access to valuable information. I told Jane if she could get her hands on any sensitive material from his office, I'd split the proceeds with her. What happened the day that she took the attaché case? I picked her up in front of Nigel's office as arranged, but Jane insisted on keeping the case in her possession and accompanying me to my meeting with Yuri. But Jane regretted what she'd done, and when she spotted Emma and me at Covent Garden, she approached us for help. And when she spotted Giles watching her, it scared her off. I knew she'd had second thoughts when she failed to meet me before our rendezvous with Yuri, so I went to her dressing room to look for her. And found her dead? Yes. I'm ashamed to admit I was actually more concerned about the attaché case. Before I could search for it, I heard someone coming, so I hid. Did someone enter the room? Indeed. It was Giles Badgepie. After he got over his shock at seeing Jane dead, I watched as he found the attaché case and left with it. A perfect crime of opportunity. I was trying to catch up to him when I ran into you at the theater. Mr. Winslow, you're under arrest for breaking and entering, espionage charges, and very possibly murder. Emma, it's me, Jessica. Do you know if Jane ever changed her name to Winslow after she married James? I see. I'm going to need your help with something. Okay. <clears throat> so, 
I want to go ahead and end it here. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And thank you so much for all the support. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.